Willkommen zu Beauty in the Bookcase. In other words, hey guys and welcome back to Beauty in the Bookcase. Today's episode is brought to you by Plastic Plants for when you want some pretty flowers but you don't want to water them. Now, I've been studying German on and off for a few years now and one of the things I hear the most all the time is, ugh, German is just not a pretty language. It's so angry, it's so aggressive. So I wanted to make a video today about some of the cutest slash silliest German words that I've learned so far because realistically, who can be scared of a language that calls gloves hand shoes? I'm not joking. That is the actual word. So the first word for today is the word Scheinwerfer. Now Scheinwerfer literally means shine throwers, but it actually refers to your headlights. So, you know, you can't tell me that there isn't something absolutely wholesome and adorable out of hearing somebody call their headlights little shine throwers. Although in fairness, when I read shine throwers, I kind of think of those people with like those obnoxious LED lights that don't let you see anything. I mean, I don't drive, but I am a seasoned passenger. And if there is one thing that I think anyone who just has ever been in a car at any point in their lives. If there's one thing we can all agree on is LEDs suck. You know, there's nothing quite like not being able to see anything because you're currently blind, especially if they're coming at you. So I don't know, you could even use this adorable word as an insult. I love how I'm like, it's not aggressive. And then I'm like, use it as an insult. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna go back to my, uh, main purpose of cuteness and just move on to our next word which is schmetterling um it's just a word for butterfly but i have never like butterfly whatever it doesn't sound that cute but schmetterling is probably one of my favorite german words i just think it's so adorable and it just mm, i don't know you say schmetterling and you just want to like pinch something's like cheeks you just be like oh you're so cute Granted, I don't know, is it just me? You should let me know in the comments if it's just me. Cause for example, I like like the German word for please is bitte. And I think that's so cute. Like please, not that cute. Por favor, per favore, s'il vous plaît. Not that cute. Bitte, it's just like, it's just like such a cute little sound. I don't know. Is this just gonna be a video of me fangirling over the German language? Probably. Is this my uh, plea for Germany to adopt me? Maybe. <laughs> You know, today we're just gonna prove whether my concealer is good or not if it can hide all that red eyeshadow I accidentally dropped on my face. Um, you might have heard the word Schildkröte means literally like shield frog. It's actually the German word for turtle. And you can't tell me that there isn't something absolutely adorable and amusing about the fact that when the, you know, when the German language was developing, somebody saw a turtle and they went like, well, what should we name this? And they just went like, well, it's a frog with a shield. Obviously, what else would you name? It? <laughs> like, it's so cute. I don't know. It's one of those things that almost sounds like, it's like walkie talkie. You know how there's like that joke about like, what if the person who named walkie talkies named everything else and everything, like all the names become these like ridiculously literal things. But yeah, it's almost like at times, when they were developing the German language, they were just like, where is there a child? And they just asked a child to name different things. And that's how we ended up with things like Schildkröte, just like, yep, it's what it looks like to me. I don't know, why are you asking me? <laughs> I don't know, I think it's cute. I think it's adorable and yeah. And speaking of things that there is no way a toddler didn't name, we have the word for um, guinea pig, not the actual animal, just like the concept of having like a guinea pig in science. Um, so there's no way this wasn't named by a toddler because the word is Versuchskaninchen, which means attempt rabbit. You're telling me a child didn't make up the German language. You're telling me there's something so scary about an attempt rabbit. I actually, I didn't know this word before making this video, but I just laughed. I couldn't help but laugh because, I mean, yeah, what else is it other than literally an attempt to rob it? Like it's what their purpose is. But who named it that? Who who looked at like those cute little rabbits and went like, 
Festus Kaninchen, that's what you are, literally, so we're just gonna go with it. Like, come on. You can't tell me it wasn't a child. It had to be. Now, another word that I found very amusing is Kopfkino. So Kopf is head and Kino is uh, the movie theater, the cinema. So Kopfkino is literally like, it's one of those things that there's not like an equivalent in English or probably mm, uh, there's not an equivalent in any of the languages I know is what I'm gonna say um, but it's literally like for when you're imagining things in your head like a scene plays out entirely in your head a that's adorable and B it's so useful why don't we like use it more often I wish I would have found this one when I did my um, untranslatable words video because I mean come on I don't know about you but like either when I can't sleep or when I'm in a car or sometimes when I'm listening to music, like I'll picture an entire music video in my head and you're telling me that all along there was a word for that and nobody told me about it. So now you know, it's called Kino. We all do it. Don't lie to yourself. Don't tell me that you don't do it. I know you do it. I've seen you. Actually, I have a really embarrassing story actually about a Kofkino Kino moment. So when I was little, we were going on a field trip. I don't know to where. I think it was to like the like the science, the children's science museum. And so I was always a big daydreamer. I was always more in my head than out of it. Um, not one for being in the present moment. I've been getting better about it, but still, you know, very much ADD, head in the clouds kind of person. And I, I was having, I don't remember entirely because it's been so long. In short, I was just kind of like spaced out and thinking that, I don't know if I was like at a pageant or, I don't know, I was somewhere where I had to like wave at a bunch of people and apparently I wasn't just waving in my head, I was waving like in person in this bus full of other people who were looking at me just like waving at like nothing we were on the road so like all you could see were was like the highway and then like plants everywhere so it was pretty cringe it was pretty embarrassing because <laughs> like everyone like they didn't just l just go like oh that's weird and left it at that like they called me out on it they were like who are you waving at why are you waving at the plants whatever it's pretty cringe i am now weirdly like self-conscious about like when I'm daydreaming, whether I'm actually, you know, doing anything in real life and embarrassing myself or not. I don't think it's ever happened again since then. If it has, people have had the decency to not point it out, but sometimes I think about that moment and I, I just cringe internally so hard. So watch out for your cup of kino. Speaking of German words that are ridiculous, but I can relate to, can somebody explain to me who came up with the concept of drei Käse hoch, which literally means three cheeses high, which is basically for us vertically challenged people. It's kind of like, oh, if I stacked up three wheels of cheese, that's you, that's your size, tiny little human. Like what? First of all, this sounds French. <laughs> This sounds French to me only because I feel like only the French would measure things in like cheeses, like crates of wine. But no, it's a, it's a German phrase. It is real because I saw it multiple times and I was like, I don't know. I feel like this is just somebody like taking the piss and just being like, <laughs> three cheeses high. But no, it's a thing. So um, yeah, I don't know, Germany. I'm sorry that why are you coming? Like, why are you coming for me like this? <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not all six feet tall. It's very hard to not be a teensy tiny person. I don't know. The tropics didn't, <laughs> I got too much sun, I guess, and I needed more water. I don't know. My, uh, yeah, I didn't grow enough. I'm sorry, I apologize. But as much as I'm like being dramatic and being like, how dare you call me three cheeses high? It's precious, honestly. I would actually be, I think I'd laugh. I'd be like, what? <laughs> if I'd never heard that before and somebody was just like talking to me and they were like oh like your three cheeses high I'd be like I'm sorry I'm what now <laughs> it's just so ridiculous but it's adorable and I approve of it so from now on uh I only want us to use cheese as a unit of measurement I'm just gonna start rating books like these many cheeses out of five watch out I'm gonna do it next video <laughs>
in other ridiculously relatable words, here comes in a Schweinehund. In a meaning like interior inside, Schweine being pig, Hund being dog. So it's your inner pig dog, which apparently is the reason we all proc procrastinate. Again, this was another one that I didn't think was true and then I kept seeing it and I was like, well, I guess it must be true. But yeah, apparently the reason why we can't get anything done and we have a hard time getting out of bed and being productive, the true culprit of our procrastination isn't that we're lazy, it's our inner pig dog. Why it's a pig dog? I don't know. If you're German, I don't know. Explain it to me, please. I demand an explanation for this. Why is it a pig dog? Why did you combine those two? But at least now we have an excuse. So it's not your fault if you can't get out of bed in the morning. It's your inner pig dog. Now this next word is like a perfect example of what it feels like when I'm filming my videos. It's a kudelmudel. So kudelmudel is like an unstructured like mess, like just chaos. In other words, the brain of somebody with anxiety. <laughs> um, first of all, adorable. I would not take offense to being told that I am a kudelmudel. But also, where was this word my whole life? If you've ever met anyone with anxiety or ADD or God forbid both, like that's our life. Our life is kudelmudel. Me doing my makeup here sitting on the floor because I don't have a high enough table that would actually feature this background. Kudelmudel. Every, every single time I do a video, it's kudelmudel. But you know what? I get through it, you're watching it, and I appreciate it. Thanks. Make sure to, you know, hit that subscribe button for more unstructured chaos. Maybe that should have been my channel name. Now that I know it, just change it. Just be like, rebranding, kudelmudel. But let us return now to ridiculous literal words because it doesn't get more ridiculous than doodle sack. Do you want to know what a doodle sack is? It's a yodel sack. And what is a yodel sack? It's bagpipes. I'm looking at you, Ireland and Scotland. Did you guys know that actually there are different bagpipes? Uh, I don't know why I'm instructing you on this, but when I was in college, I learned that there are Ilian bagpipes and Scottish bagpipes. They're different. I don't remember entirely what the difference was, but I do remember that we had like a CD and we had to like listen to all these little sound bites and memorize them because our professor would play them in class and we would have to like write down on like our exams what they were. So learn the differences between your doodle sacks. Speaking of ridiculously German things, here comes something about sausages. <laughs> So apparently, and this one as well, there were so many of these that I had to look up and like cross-reference because I was like, there is no way this thing is real. Like it just sounds like somebody's trying to make fun of Germans. But apparently, uh, there's a phrase. It's, uh, Sie spielt die beleidigte Lebewurst. Do you want to know what that means? It means she's playing the insulted sausage. Why? I don't know. Again, Germany. I have so many questions for you. I love you, but you're weird. Um, yeah, apparently that's just used when like somebody's like, like when someone's really worked up. I just, I don't understand. It's like one of those things where I'm like, for a really literal language, you make some really odd like metaphors. What, what was this about? I don't know, but it's kind of funny, but also really weird because I don't know. I, I'm still figuring out how I feel. Let me know in the comments how you feel about the insulted sausage. Now on to another ridiculously specific but incredibly useful word that we should all know but for some reason we don't is schnapp idee. Now schnapp idee is literally like schnapps idea so like an idea you get while you're drunk. Um, I don't really drink much so I can't really relate to this one very much but I'm amused by it. You know how like sometimes people get really drunk and then they start like talking and then they just start talking and then they start talking about weird things and they're like thinking this is like a groundbreaking discovery and you're like, yeah, sure. Now, now you know there's a word for it and who knows? Let me know what schnapp ideas you guys have had. And the last word we're gonna learn today is Hüftgold. Hüftgold is literally hip gold and it's used to refer to your love handles. And even though love handle is already pretty cute, 
You're telling me that having hip gold isn't like top tier? Are you kidding me? I have like huge hips, but if somebody told me that they loved my hip gold, I'd be like, heck yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So anyone out there who's struggling with their weight, who's kind of like, mm, I don't know, my body, whatever. Don't be so hard on yourself, girl or boy, whoever you are, non-binary person. You got some hip gold right there and we love it. <laughs> All right guys, and here is our final look. I tried to sort of go for like a German flag aesthetic because this video has been about cute German words and also my secret little plea to Germany to please adopt me. Get me out of America, please, I'm begging you. <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, I'd love to do more videos in German. I really like the language. I think it's fun and interesting. The grammar confuses me, but I think I'm finally getting it down like 50 years after starting, but it doesn't matter because I'm getting there slowly and I, you know, would love to help you guys learn German too or any other languages that you'd like to learn. If there are any languages you'd like me to take a look at, definitely leave them in the comments for me. Make sure you like this video and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you know every time I upload on Wednesdays and Sundays. And I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.